ladies and gentlemen, to Crusader Kings 2, the War of Conquest continues. Kind of, sort of, in a way. We are reforming Westeros in an image better fitting that of, uh, well, of a a a Aegon's mind. He's got a vision of Westeros that involves uh, Lord Paramounts that he truly can trust ruling every region of Westeros. After all, the king will need undying loyalty from all the other uh, Lord Paramounts of Westeros if he is to see his final vision culminate or manifest itself in reality. I am the Golden Joblivian, and we're back with King Aegon the Scourge of Rattown. And I, I can see Westeros is really fractured. I think we just ended a war to... What did we do? Ah, yes. Wreck the Greyjoys. We wrecked the Greyjoys. I believe we took away... The, yeah, we took away the Iron Isles. And I asked a lot of you who you think I should make Lord Paramounts of the Iron Isles. And there were a few ideas, few ideas. Some people thought that House Harlaw was good. Some people thought House Drum was good. Some, some people even suggested um, House Valerian. Uh, give it to the High Valerians. Interesting idea. Oh, Lord Arnold the Rapist. Nice. Lady Arian the Imperious. Ah, yes, you were down here in the King's Wood. You aided Argalak the Bastard. Yes, you did. Um, very well, we will be merciful. And with the war now over, here we go. Yes, the war has ended, reappoint the old council. The vassals of the Iron Throne now find you formidable, as they should. As they should. What the fuck is going on in the north? Torin, what is this? Defending against Lord Rodwell the Rapist. God, there's a, there's a, lot, of, there's a lot of rapists here. Um, war against the tyranny of King Torin. And he's not a tyrant. Okay, all right. Uh, we have armies that need to go away. Let's see, get rid of you. Get rid of you. Um, you armies down here, disband, disband, disband. Um, go ahead and land in Blackwater Bay, disband you. We're, we're just, oh, oops, I have, uh, too many vassals. Let's see. Let's give a vassal to Gawain Gardner. He seems, he seems like he would, uh, let's, uh, go ahead and have Eustace. Go ahead and have Eustace. Eustace doesn't really like us, and, uh, you can deal with him now. Excellent. All right, go ahead and disband you guys, disband the ships. Is that all of our stuff? That Yep, that's all of our armies. Now then, titles. Lands and titles. Um, Kingdom of the Iron Isles. Um, let's see. If I were to give it to House Valeri Valerion, what would that look like? Um, they'd be High Valerian. They would be based over here in Driftmark, but they would rule the Iron Isles. They probably would be rebelled against quite a bit. Maybe. However, I did have a concern that if House of Lord Daemon here is ruling the Iron Isles and he's getting rebelled against, he could essentially replace the rebelling Ironborn with his own High Valyrians. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if that. I don't know if the AI does that. I'm kind of tempted to give the Iron Isles to House Valerion. They they are rulers of um. You know what? You know what? The H House Valerion rules the greatest fleet. They are the rulers of the fleet. And because of that, they need ships. And there's only one place I can think of where they can get enough ships. And that would be the Iron Isles. And if the Ironborn don't like it, we will we will, we will, will bring them fire and blood. We will bring them fire and blood. I know there's some people wanted to house Harlaw and Drum to, you know, to, uh, to rule the Iron Isles. Um, I'm not, I don't really like the idea of Ironborn ruling themselves, because I feel like as long as Ironborn rule the Iron Isles, they will consistently try to get independence and just raid everything else. This is the best way I can think of to remove the kind of raider threat. So I'll go ahead and give that to Lord Paramount Daemon. Oh no, he loves us. It looks like he might die though, he's got an infection. But Aethon, the demon of Hammerhorn. Excellent. Okay, so now the Iron Isles is being ruled by House Valerion as masters of islands and ships. We've got the High Lordship of Kingswood, the High Lordship of Pike. Let's give the High Lordship of Pike to... Can we give that to Aethon? I don't think so because he doesn't have titles. Um, let's not give it to you. Let's... I want to give that... I want to give the High Lordship to you as well. I know it's kind of getting overboard in terms of disposition. But I want to make sure House Valerion has enough uh, sway, enough political power in the Iron Isles. There you go. Now then, 
We have the High Lordship of Kingswood. Un um, unfortunately, I don't have an actual lordship. There is a house that is on the verge of collapse, and it's called House Coheris. And I didn't remember it the last couple of episodes, but I do remember it this time. Co Coheris? Ah, here we go. Quentin Coheris. He is infirm. High Valerian. Yes, yeah, see? Somebody, yeah, they said they were High Valerians, and uh, you guys are absolutely right. We need... Let's see. Ja is that Jacaris? Yep, Jacaris Coheris. Of course. Of course his name is Jacaris Coheris. Why wouldn't it be? All right. Well, we need to take House Jacaris under our... Uh, under our... Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Larissa, you are married to Ethan. And yet you had um, Amy's Valerion, okay? And she had a bastard. Hmm, all right. He's a bastard. Um, let's, uh, he, he does carry the bloodline of House Coheris, though. Does, did it take a, oh, ooh. Is infirm and suffers from a sickly disposition. Amy's really old. All right, so Jacaris Waters, the bastard, last of the line of House Coheris. We will arrange for you. Reyna. Reyna Valerian. Well, she is of High Valerian stock, and she is of uh, similar, similar age. High Valerian. Maybe we should have... No, you know what? No, no, no. I was going to say, maybe we should have had this been matrilinear, but then that would have mean uh, Coheris would have died out. This way, House Valerian is uh, helping the Coheris line make a, make a return. Then let's get a marriage between you and no one. <laughs> you and no one. Okay, um, maybe? He's a Kai Valerian, though. There's no one he can marry, though, unfortunately. Actually, no, I mean, here's people right here. What the hell, what the hell? Let's find people of our religion. Yes, maybe? Maybe? Hey, there's some. Uh, Bela. Ah, of House Keltigar. Um, is that, is that wise? I'm not sure if that's really that wise. Um, let's... So we've got High Valerian. She's the only High Valerian, actually. Is there any... No, ten. That's it, ten. Mantarian. Oh, God, look at that. Dwarf, hunchback, club-footed, ugly. She... Nelarla is... <laughs> she's a bioweapon. <laughs> Oops. Apologies. She is a bioweapon. Um... Okay. How about we pick N N Nerys? Nerys. Ooh, who are you? Miss Mistress Desaria. Okay. I mean, I know she's not a High Valyrian stock, but this might give a chance for more, more Coheris to come back. And I was going to give Coheris their own lands and titles, but we only have a High Lordship. And that doesn't do doesn't do much, uh, much good for um, House Coheris. Your grace, I have been instructing young Caesarian, young Caesar, in the ways of sword and lance as requested. I am pleased to say that he appears to be a natural. His martial prowess has improved greatly over the recent weeks. He's a poor fighter. Well, you know, he's only six years old. He's only six years old, so, um, we will, we will, oh my god, what is this? I had Caesar accompany Star Storm Singer Clayton to the Temple of Claw Isle to learn more about the Valyrian faith. Upon returning, Clayton claims that Caesar had a vision from the gods while praying. Apparently, my son loudly proclaimed passages from the dragon gods, which he had no way of knowing. Perhaps he is blessed. His abilities keep growing. Oh my god, he's gonna be he's gonna be a god. Look at that. Inspiring leader. Strong. Poor fighter. He is cynical. Promised godhood? This character received a vision where they were promised by the gods to become a god themselves. Holy shit, Caesar's gonna become a god. This is this is nuts. This is nuts. I think it was um. Oh, damn it. I don't remember your name. I know your name starts with Saber. I could look it up right now, but I'm too lazy to do that. Good old Saber. I don't remember the rest of your name, but you did tell me that the failing of Marys to hatch his own dragon was a sign that he was unfit for leadership of the Kingdom of Westeros. I mean, if we ever want to see the Kingdom of Westeros turn into the Empire, we will need to have a strong ruler, a strong ruler. And Marys, you were... Marys, you're kind of failing me. You're kind of failing me. Can I force you to train? Yes. Oh, nice. So he, he, he can learn. He can learn. He's not that good, but he can learn. He also has a dragon egg. Out of curiosity, does Caesar have a dragon egg? He, he actually has no dragons. His rival is his brother. No. No, it's Jacaris Waters. 
Okay, good, good. Whew. I thought Caesar's rival was um his uh, twin brother, Janix. That would not have been good. Are they friends? No, but they are twins. Diligent. Excellent. So Caesar's power continue to grow. Uh, God damn it. There's something else I was going to say, but I fucking forgot. Your grace, I believe, Lenient. Oh, okay. Alien. Yeah, okay. We're going to ransom everybody. Ransom everybody. Get them out of the dungeons. Oh, well, we didn't get much much gold there that this time. Winter is still in Dragonstone. Um, Your Grace, I humbly ask you to interview my, on behalf against the aggression of Lord Paramount Oris. No. Lord Fred approaches you, my liege. I have a great idea for a monument. Something to raise your cultural status and make the people notice what a great ruler you are. Yeah, I would require some gold in your patience. Let's see. Can you be trusted? Probably not, but go for it. A warden title stands empty. This is an ancient and venerable duty. We must select a warden of the east. I love how I get one choice. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. We're in the West, sure. They now view us with fear. All right, so, God damn it, there was something I was going to do. Ah, yes, someone suggested sending Mayrice to the temple. Um, why can't we do that? Oh, he has to be 10. Mm. Someone did give a fan. Somebody suggested changing Caesar's name to Imperion, and while Imperion is a cool name, uh, I like Caesar more, but I love the I love the name of Imperion. So I think that if we ever do get a dragon for Caesar, we are going to name it Imperion because you know why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't he ride a dragon called Imperion? I'm just kind of upset that we can't just rename dragons whenever we want to, you know? Kinda, kind of silly. All right, Warren of the South. Who's that going to be? It's going to be the Reach guy. It's going to be the Reach guy. Uh, let's go take a look at the Lords of Westeros. Oh. Battle after battle, siege after siege, my friend Lord Paramount Ulrus must be getting pretty tired of war. Who's he at war with? Uh, Lady Serena. Hmm, some gold should help my friend with this war. My friend has everything under control. My help is unnecessary. Some gold will help him. Yeah, let's give him some gold. Oh, you know what? Before we go look at the Lords of the Realm, because, uh, let's see, we've replaced the Lords of the Stormlands, we've replaced the Lords of the Iron Isles, the Westerlands have been replaced... Um, the Tullys have been granted the Riverlands, and they love us forever. House Gardener seems to be... They seem to be, uh, uh, decent. They seem to be decent folk. Maybe even try to sway him. That might be worthwhile. House Martell. Oh, yes. You are next, and you have allied with the Lannisters. You will regret that. Now, we did plot and successfully made the Iron Isles revolt. I don't think it's that dishonorable. I mean, it's for the good of the realm, you know. If we want to prevent future wars, we have to nip this stuff in the in the butt beforehand. Fabricate treason. Plot to incite revolt. Can I imprison her? No. Um. Let's see. Where's my spy master? Uh, vicious corruption uncovered. Build a spy network in Sunspear. Keep an eye on House Martell and let me know if they do anything that warrants uh, 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 royal royal intervention. And then we also have the Vale, who are hmm. I don't know if we can trust House Aaron. House Stark also is House Stark is also an enemy, an enemy. Although it seems like they may be getting deposed by the Boltons here soon. Lord Rodwell, the Rapist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got some terrible traits. He is your standard Bolton character. Uh, somebody suggested uh, colonizing the Old Stones, and I would, but fucking winter is everywhere. It seems you've got the good old winter bug, because winter is now everywhere. Even in Dorne. It's snowing in Dorne. A son was born to King Aegon the Scourge of Wrathtown and Queen Vera, named Dayron. Is that, um... Is that it? He's. That's just okay. Dayron. All right. That is a good name, Dayron. God, Aegon's had so many kids. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, maybe not that many. I want ten. Give me ten. Oh, something else we need to we need to have happen is we need to start educating our children. Although it might be too late for some of them. And by our yes, Rainies, Rainies, you will train that one, Daenerys will also be trained by Rainies. All right, excellent. So now she's got two daughters. Uh, Mary's 
We are educating C Caesar. Janix, we will uh, 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 assign Guardian, will be uh, us. Okay, and so we've got Caesar and Janix. We got the twins. Um, Maris is being. <laughs> uh, he, he's been assigned to Lord Athan the Bold. I mean, it's not. It's not terrible, <laughs> right? He's got, actually got some really damn good traits. Um, let's see, the twins, Rayla, we're gonna have being uh, raised by Visenya. Excellent. And let's see, Ray seems to be being taken care of, but yeah. So we, we do have a little bit of a mixing up here, but that's fine, that's fine. So Rayla is now being taken care of by Visenya, and Dayron now will also be uh, raised by Visenya, or, uh, you know, guided. Guardian? I'm not even sure what I'm trying to say. All right, so now all the children are being raised by great warriors and stuff. Do we have someone training training the children? We do. We've got Ulrus. Excellent. Okay, something else I remembered. We need a, uh, somebody suggested marrying uh, Ulrus's young, was it youngest son? A youngest son to House Durandin. Except where the fuck are the Durandins? I'm, I'm not even sure. Let's see. Kohorus. Hmm. See, Durandin. Ah, yes. So, House. Ah, uh, he's still in our dungeons, right? Okay. So, Argella is here, and she's having lots of Durandin babies. Right, we've got Floris Durandin, who we can actually. Who some. They wanted to. How about this? How about we marry the Baratheons to the Durandins? That sounds like a reasonable thing, right? Except we can't. We can't do that. Um. That we can't do that because the vassals won't let me do that. Because we we can only arrange marriages between people who are in our court, and Oris Brathian is not in our court. He's got his own lands and stuff, so unfortunately, we cannot combine the Brathians or the Durandans. Unfortunate. But we are plotting now against the Martells. Peace has returned to Westeros for now, except for the North. Can we do anything about this? No. <gasps> it is warming as winter comes to an end in Dragonstone. Winter is over, and building can begin in the capital. Excellent. Get these messages out of my face. And we will build. And we will not legalize slavery, even though slavery is, re is really, really great for building and development. We will not build it. We will not legalize it because the people have spoken. And, um, yeah, so that's, that's, we're, we're not going to do that. Because this is a new continent, a new land. All right, so now we're building in Dragonstone. Actually, have you built a refuge yet? Uh, we, yes. We build a new holding. We could, actually. But should we? But we also have enough money to colonize Old Stones, which, while normally I wouldn't care about getting the River Crown, we can get more Valyrian swords, though. I think we're going to do it. It'll take a thousand gold. But you know what? I think we've got enough money to be able to do this. So let's go ahead and start colonizing Old Stones. And let's actually not we're not whoa, 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 we're not gonna make it the capital, but we will make it the crown focus. We'll focus on uh, 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 building up building up old stones. What is this? Improve holding. Once the work of improving a holding has started, the castle should be sent there to direct the workers' efforts. I mean, I like Lord Paramount Stefan, but I kind of want somebody who's actually good with stewardship. Um. All right. At, right? Oh no no no. Or do we do oversee construction? Oh, it's Oversea Construction. Gotcha. So, surely by now we can get somebody in our uh, 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 court who knows what they're doing with stewardship, right? Surely. Uh, no, it doesn't It doesn't seem we'll be able to. Well, shit. Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we can get a guy with 15. I would love to get, um, Relekne. Yeah, but, um... We can't have female stewards. That's kind of... Or not stewards, but master of coins. That kind of sucks. Um, let's get Gunther. He's a pretty tall guy. Let's get him. And we will make him the new master of coin. And we will use him to focus on building up old stones. And we will recolonize old stone. Oh, if we... Is Summerhall here? No. No, no, no. Uh, Summerhall happens 
many, many, many centuries from now. All right, okay, so that's fine. Let's go replace our master of coin with Gunther, and we'll have him oversee construction in the colony. Fantastic. Everything is coming, coming to a head. All right, that, yep, a lot of this shit. I do have auto stop plots and, 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 and things, right? Yes. Fabricate evidence of Lady Marla's blah, 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 blah. Choose, build a road network. Hmm, yeah, we can't build it unless we uh, have Storm's Head or King's Landing or Lannis Port or something. And the thing is, is I think you can only build the road network in sections. I think that's how it works. You build each section at a time and it makes things great or something. I don't know. All right, factions. <gasps> you would dare. In prison. No. Hmm. Well, shit. No, Prince Oliver. I thought that was Oberyn Martell for a second. I humbly ask you to intervene on my behalf. Uh, who are you? Stokeworth. Your wife is in my dungeon. Uh, no. Well, what's the what's the issue here? Defend, defending in defending against Lord Paramount Oris in Stormlander Stokeworth does your war over Stokeworth? Nope. I don't care. Let's see if we can't ransom more people. Let's see if they got more monies. No. Hmm. Uh, Lord Paramount Edmund the Able has declared Lord Paramount Edmund's claim on Dark Moor, so now he's gone to war with the Vale. Under my guidance, my son Janix is slowly mastering the art of swordsmanship. Nice. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, where are the what are the, what are we doing with the dragons? Leg wait a minute, legitimize Oris Baratheon, so that his line and name may continue. Interesting. Yeah, but I don't want him to be a Targaryen though. Uh, though somebody su did suggest that I test it out first, and I haven't remembered to do that because I'm not really crazy on uh, legitimizing Oris because I mean he's got his own sigil here. Look at this Baratheon and three-headed dragons. That's actually, that's actually a really a uh, really awesome sigil. Lord Paramount Oris has been a and able servant. I will reward him. I will honor him with the Targaryen heirloom. No, we're not going to do that. Well, I mean, it all depends. What do we got here? What do we got here? Um, no. There's nothing. Well, I mean, we could give him the true account of Adam of Duskendale's journey, but I don't really want to do that. I'll owe him a favor. There we go. Um, oh, the Vale and the Riverlands have gone to war. Revoke the city of Shadowtown from Moors. Okay. Well, uh, sending our spy master hasn't really shown a whole lot. Has there been any corruption? No. Military innovations, though. Insight, revolt, fabricate, treason, kidnap, kill. Meh, I don't really want to do all that. The monument promised by Lord Frederick is finished. Some people in the crowd cover their children's eyes as the statue is unveiled. It's a couple in the middle of lovemaking and not exactly presented in a tasteful way. And he did this because he is lustful. So he made a lustful statue. Children must learn this sooner or later. Tear it down. Lord Frederick, I think... Ah, oh, I understand now. Lord Frederick was the uh, former master of coin. So tear it down. Lord Frederick, you have failed me. Let's see. Is there anything we can do with these... Uh, oh, hey. Dragon Conquest of Sunstone. No, we're not going to do that. I mean, we could. We could Dragon Conquest uh, the Stepstones. Queen Visenya has been a leal and able servant. I will owe her a favor. I don't remember... I don't remember Visenya being lustful. I know Rainey's was. It seems Visenya now has become lustful. Interesting. I will owe her a favor. We need to start swaying somebody. Who are we going to sway? I think I was going to sway the gardeners. Let's see here. Let's sway Lord Paramount Gawain. You are bent low over your war table, struggling to stay focused and to keep your eyes open when your wife, Queen Visenya, enters. She crosses the room and inspects the war table over your, soul, over your shoulder. Perhaps a fresh pair of eyes might prove helpful, dear husband. Perhaps you are right, Visenya. Perhaps you are right indeed. Your wife has received an education in warfare like yourself, so she quickly grasps the nuances of the problem as you explain it. The two of you set to work discussing and comparing troop compositions. Visenya is a most competent strategist. Within the hour, you've laid the groundwork for a promising solution. What the fuck is the solution? I don't understand. <laughs> is this like some kind of super hypothetical invasion of the world? It probably is. What am I saying? It probably is. A brilliant idea, Visenya. Have you any additional ideas? Common interests gets war knowledge. Excellent. 191,000 men. 
chosen by R'hllor. The two gods are locked in an internal struggle over the fate of the world, a struggle that, according to the ancient prophecy from the books of Ashai, will only end when Azora High, the messianic figure, will return wielding a flaming sword called Lightbringer, the Red Sword of Heroes, and raises dra and raise dragons of stone. Oh, that's concerning. The Red Priest says, I am Azora High Reborn, worthy to wield Lightbringer and drive the darkness from the world. Holy crap. Aegon. Oh shit. <laughs> Princess Ray. No, Princess Ray. Sturdy. His character is physically sturdy. So that's what you call it. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Alright, so apparently Magister Roko the Quiet. Oh. Wait a minute. No, he's chosen by Relor. They're not naming me. Yeah, he's chosen by R'hllor. Okay, gotcha. Dragon hatching chance. Yeah, well, you know, that is the price you pay. You get special powers when you follow the Red God, but when you follow the old Valyrian gods, you get, uh, well, you get better shit. National Revolt risk minus 2%. Dragon hatching chance 400, 400. All right. The guards drag Argilac Durandin up from his cell and throw him at your feet. I come for justice, he says. By right of birth and blood, I demand trial by combat. Let's see, he's got 85. We have 130. He's much older. I think we should fight. If we do that, Mayrice will take the throne as a nine-year-old. Who is our designated regent? Visenya, 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 Visenya. Uh, let's make Lord Trist. Now let's make Daria. We will make the Lady. You see, that's how glorious we are as King of the Seven Kingdoms. We can make Lord Paramounts of the Realm court jesters. That is how powerful we are. And we will fight Argalak. It's super dangerous. But you know what? I think it's about time we send the arrogant one. Uh, we send the old man on his way. I'll handle this myself. Excellent. And we will have a duel in Dragonstone. You and Prince Argalak slowly circle each other, tense and focused. You scan him for any sign of weakness, any opening in his defense that you could possibly exploit. Prince Argalak, this will be your last storm. Let's see, we're both strong. I'm younger, so I'm probably faster. Attacking with force probably wouldn't make any sense. Being defensive could also work. Let's attack with speed. The gods will guide me. You see a weak spot, a vulnerability in Prince Argilac's defense? It's not much, but it's all you need. I quickly avoided his forceful attack, so he went for strength, I went for speed. Prince Argilac tries to fight back, but I force my way through and move to elegantly whack my black fire into his fingers. I don't know what that means. Finally, I thrust my black fire hard into his chest. I love the more detailed readouts of the duels now that they've added with 1.9, I think. Um... Thrust Blackfire into his chest. The surprise is clear on his face as blood fills his mouth. I must have hit something important. Gee, you don't say. Fire and blood. Um, this might make us enemies of House Durandon. Seeing as how they've got ten members. Argolak crumples to the ground lifeless. You wipe his blood from your Blackfire. The deed is done. He is dead. Victory is mine. He sought a trial by combat. And he had it. Let's see, severely injured. Well, we didn't sever any body parts or anything. We ended it with dignity. You know, we didn't decapitate him or anything. Um, let's see, he is dead. House Durandin. Who is his heir now? Argella. Slade Kinsman. Yeah, but I mean, that was that was a trial by combat, though. And now there are nine members left. Let's see, one, two, three, five. This is a five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, 5 plus... No, 5 plus 3 is 8. Where is this other Durandin? I don't understand. No, these are all Coles. No, they're Durandin. Oh, right, because she married him matrilinearly. Yes. Yes, they did. Hmm. All right. And she is married to a Tarth. Okay. Of House Toth. All right. Well, we have ended Ar Argalak. We've ended Argalak. Your rival Lord Cadwell Cod has been imprisoned by... Uh, has been imprisoned in Riverrun. All right. That's fine. So now we, 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 we look to reform Dorne. We're looking to get some kind of evidence we can use to imprison Daria of Dorne. So we're trying to antagonize... Actually, you know what? We should be antagonizing her. Go ahead and antagonize her, and we maybe we can get her angry enough to, re to rebel. 
The Grace, I humbly ask that you intervene on my behalf against the aggression of Lord Paramount Edmund Tully. I unfortunately cannot, which is going to make House Aaron very upset with us. Which now seems that uh, we have a disloyal house in the Vale. But we're trying to reform Dorn, and then probably the Vale, and then probably the North. The North has been split by a civil war for some time. And it seems... Okay, well, the Boltons were winning, but now the Starks are. My liege, there's a rumor here in Sunspear that one of the local nobles might be corrupt. Handle wise, this information can be used to implicate one of your enemies here. Then use it as you see fit. Well, my liege, Commander Oris the Shadow Town decided to not risk upsetting his vassals and confessed. All right, he gave us some money. Okay, nice. Holy shit. Grave news, this very night, Caesar was assaulted in his chambers. An assassin somehow managed to sneak into the settlement, killing any guard in her way. In a stroke of luck, Caesar managed to impale the assailant on a fire poker. She was later identified as Felice, who the Storm Singers had long suspected of deviancy. Whoa. By the gods, how could this happen? Redouble the guards. Now he's killing assassins? This is madness. Caesar, your powers are too great. Lightning reflexes? <laughs> this character can react in an instant, drawing his sword as fast as a flash of lightning. He's he's literally a demigod, but he is developing some strange ability, like uh, strange habits. He's cynical and he's paranoid. Well, I mean, it'll make him impossible to kill in a plot, but it's age seven. Strangled a snake, child of Mithridates, promised godhood, killing assassins in his bed. This this kid has no limits to his power. I, I mean, a lot of people are saying we should send Mayrees to the temple and have Prince Caesar rule, but I don't even think that's going to be necessary. I think Caesar is just going to take the throne for himself. He might create the new empire, the empire of New Valyria, I mean. He's going to create the new Valyrian empire, which would be fucking awesome. But all that will have to take place in the next episode. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, this has been Crusader Kings 2, the War of Conquest. I have been the Golden Joblivion. And until next time, I will see you all later.